In topic C of module 2, we are using our knowledge of the place value system to multiply decimal fractions by multi-digit whole numbers. We're also going to be reasoning about the placement of the decimal point in our products. When multiplying decimals by multi-digit whole numbers, it is very beneficial to do the following steps before you multiply. The first is to round the factors to estimate the product. In our problem we have 2 and 4 tenths times 32. We know that 2 and 4 tenths is approximately or about 2. So we show that by using this squiggly line symbol. This symbol means about. So 2 and 4 tenths is about 2. And 32 is approximately 30. So if we look at our, pro our factors we see that we have about 2 times 30. And we know that 2 times 30 is 60. So our answer should be something close to 60. The next step is to convert the decimal into its unit form before multiplying. Looking at our problem again, we see we have 2 and 4 tenths. 4 tenths is our last place. So we're going to convert this to the tenths place. How many tenths are in 2 and 4 tenths? Well, we know that that is 24 tenths times 32. Converting to the unit form will make it a lot easier when you get ready to multiply, which we'll do next. Now we'll use the area model to multiply our factors together. We have 24 tenths times 32. We're going to take our decimal factor and unbundle it across the top. We have 20 tenths plus 4 tenths. And our whole number we're going to unbundle on the side. We have 30 plus 2. Now we simply multiply each section. We have 2 times 20, which is 40, and 2 times 4, which is 8. We have 30 times 20, and that is 600, and we have 30 times 4, which is 120. Now we simply add our rows to get our partial products. 40 plus 8 is 48. 600 plus 120 is 720. Now we add our partial products. We get 8, 6, 7. But we must remember that this is not 768 holes. 768 tenths. So now we need to convert this back to tenths. We know that 768 tenths is actually 76 and 8 tenths. Now let's think back to our original estimate where we said that 2 and 4 tenths times 32 was approximately 2 times 30 which is 60 so our estimate was approximately 60. Now if we look at these two answers, 768 and 76 and 8 tenths, we can see that 76 and 8 tenths is a much more reasonable answer than 768. So that is one reason to estimate before you multiply. Now we're going to use what we've learned to complete a real world application problem. Pat rides his bike a total of six and eighty-three hundredths miles to and from school every day. How many miles does he ride in twenty-five days? First, we have to find our numbers and pull those out. Pat rides six and eighty-three hundredths miles in twenty-five days. So we have six and eighty-three hundredths times twenty-five. The first thing we're going to do is our estimation. 6 and 83 hundredths is approximately 7 and 25 is almost 30. 
So we have 7 times 30, which is 210. One very important thing to remember when you're estimating is that if you round both of your numbers up, like 6 and 83 hundredths, we round it up to 7, and 25, we round it up to 30, that makes our approximate product a high product, which means it's going to be more than our actual product. So we need to keep that in mind when we actually multiply. The next step is to convert the decimal to, the, to its unit fraction. Since the last digit in this number is in the hundredths place, we're going to convert it to the hundredths. So 6 and 83 hundredths is equal to 683 hundredths. We're going to rewrite our problem in unit form. So we have 683 hundredths times 25. When we used the area model, it was easy to see the place value of each of our digits. But when we're using the standard algorithm, you really have to think about the place value. Remember that this is 5 times 3, 5 times 80, and 5 times 600. Then we will do 20 times 3, 20 times 80, and 20 times 600. First I'm going to calculate the partial products, then I'll show you how they relate to the standard alg algorithm. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 80 is 400. And 5 times 600 is 3,000. When we add these three partial products, from our first digit, we're going to get 5, 1, 4, 3. Now let's take this product and place it into the standard algorithm. What we're going to see is it comes out a little bit, it's the same answer, it's just written a little bit differently. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 80 is 400. 4 goes in the hundreds place, and then we add the 110 that we had before, so it's 400 and 110. 5 times 600 is 3,000, plus the 400 that we brought over before, and that's 3,400. So you get the same product. I will do the same thing with 20 times the top number. We have 20 times 3, which is 60. 20 times 80 is 1,600. And 20 times 600 is 12,000. Now we'll add them. 0, 6, 6, 3, 1. Okay, bringing it over to the standard algorithm, we have 20 times 3 is 60. 20 times 80 is 1,600. So we carry the 1 to the thousands place and we put a 6 in the hundreds place. 20 times 6 600, I'm sorry, is 12,000 plus the 1,000 we just brought over makes 13,000. When we add these together, we get 5, 7, 10, 7, and 1. Now remember that 17,075 hundredths, not, a, not whole. Since we converted our decimal to the hundredths, we need to convert it back to standard form. 17,075 hundredths is equal to 170 and 75 hundredths. Now let's compare that to our original estimate. Our estimate was two, 
approximately 210. And remember, we said this was a high estimate because both of our digits or both of our factors were rounded up. Therefore, 170 and 75 hundredths is a very reasonable answer for our problem. In this video, we discussed multiplication of decimal fractions by multi-digit whole numbers. We used estimation and unit form prior to multiplying, and we learned to use an area model to multiply multi-digit numbers.